<laughs> I, I, we're ready. Go ahead. Okay. So welcome everyone to the April uh, some community board one landmarks committee meeting. Um, we have uh, a bunch of us. I'm Jason Friedman, the chair. We have Vicki, the co-chair. We got all other wonderful members here. And uh, 141, Dwayne, are you ready to present? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Do yes. you have something to put up on the screen or is that something that we're gonna do for you? I, I, don't uh, remember. No, I can share our PDF presentation that we have for Dwayne Street. Great. And will you just, um, while you're bringing that up, just what is the crux of the work, uh, like in a two sentence description that we're going to see? Louvers that were not right approved to be installed. Okay. So I try to get that as succinct as possible. That's good. I like that. So we're not going to hear a whole thing about how the history of louvers in our district. We're going to dig I... right into your building, right? promise i have no interest <laughs> in telling anything about that <laughs> okay okay so um, this is a there, there's a violation uh that we're trying to clear up with this is that correct correct okay. correct did i share i'm sorry am, am i sharing can you guys see no we can't yet okay hang on a minute oh here we go Greg, is there anyone from your team would you like me to move over it That's is just me. it is just me and myself lucy can we do a sound check what do you mean a sound check? Okay, you can hear me. Thank you. That's oh, all I meant. Oh, that's what you meant? Okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, we got it. Okay. Uh, so I'm new to this, so I apologize. Obviously, feel free to stop me. Um, we are talking about the, this is the existing photo um, of this transom above here. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor or not, but it is, is that is what is the historical landmark elements that was removed. Mm. And um, so I'm just going to kind of go through here. What's in 141 Duane Street. I think we know where all that is. Here's some historical photos uh, that we were able to obtain. Our spaces, I don't know, it's over here to the left. It's this one far left over here. Um, you can just kind of see some of the progression. It did at one time have some like wall hung HVAC units in that middle section. Oh, here we can go. You can kind of, it's this space over here to the left. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's what it was. What is this? This was, oh, what year? Why don't I know what year this is? But that's the, that's the um, designation photo on the left. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and then here's just a close up of that. Um, that does look like, I don't know how much specifics we want to get. I know some of this like wire glass type grid system um, looks like it was a little bit different. It had eight by four squares, and then what it is now is slightly different. Um, here, this is just a couple of these are 2009, just showing some of the progression from all three of these tenant spaces. The one from the far right at one point did also have similar transom treatment. But I, I don't know the history of that one, but it's not like that anymore. Um, so this is just kind of going down memory lane, I suppose. Uh, not really much to talk about, really just kind of showing. Um, all right, so here is the existing condition, a, more of a close-up version of what you can see. Um, there was an existing, I, I hesitate to call it a louver, because when we got into under construction, uh, we actually initially submitted with wanting to reuse this existing louver which is probably why no one knows about what happened during the middle of construction, but um, it was found out that this was not a real functioning louver to service the HVAC. So during construction is when the modification occurred. Uh, it was a field change to figure out a louver system that could feed our HVAC system. Uh, and here is present day, 2023. The uh, you can see the louver system of the wire glass has been removed, and now there's a louver system that is is installed. Our uh, you know talking with LPC, the landmark folks, the idea was the louvers are functional, and I can get more into details on why they're functional for our space. 
but I also want to touch on some of the stuff that, you know, we're, we're trying to do to help mitigate the issue we created for ourselves. And one of them is recessing the louvers back right now. It's hard to tell from the photos, but they do have a tiny bit of protrusion from the surrounding sides. Again, it's a little hard to see, but they do protrude maybe about a quarter inch. And so the idea is to recess those a little bit further and to add some of the wood trim elements that were also removed and to propose a new grid system to mimic that would go in front of it to kind of mimic what was there. Um, here is a little bit more, again, I don't know how much you guys want to get into the weeds. Here's a little bit more of the who, what, when, where, why for the HVAC system and why the louvers are so big and what they're doing. Um, but all in all that, that's, that's what I'm here talking about. So that is, this is, this was the last slide right here. Okay. Would you put up, I guess, uh, a picture of the exit? Yeah, that, that one seems good. The left, the something that showed the proposed. So that's existing. That and is as it stands right now. Yes. And, and that would be removed and, or it would just be covered. So it would be recessed because right now, like I said, they're kind of coming yeah, out a little out. bit. So they would get mm -hmm. pushed back. We still, because they're serving the outside air and the exhaust for, for the whole, because we did put in a brand new HVAC system. The one that was there was 20 years old, um, pushing it back. And then where some of these, um, let me scroll up a little bit, this wood trim here, building this in front of it to align with these posts here, kind of, kind of rebuilding some of the elements that was removed. Okay. And so those, okay. yeah, this, you can see that wood trim right here and kind mm -hmm. of adding in some of this trim around just to give it more of. Okay. So you would put all that trim back, you're saying? That would be the, that is the idea is to put, yeah, this vertical trim and then some of the horizontal, it's very it's hard. It's almost like a quarter round, but you know, some of the wood trim here that was removed just to give it more of that feel of um, not louvers protruding, protruding outward. And this and is like something the, that, go, go, go ahead. ahead. This is something that your client inherited. This is a new new person coming into the space. Correct. Yeah. How as it stood here with these existing photos is is how it was existing, and then we we put in the new black louvers. Ah, I see. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, <clears throat> I'll say that I like the strategy of you know, making a, you know, whatever louvers you have to put in disappear behind the grid that is in keeping with the grid of these, you know, the old phantom lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I understand that, you know, sometimes it's extremely difficult to get these air intakes and outtakes in into historical, um, you know, storefronts, right? I mean, you don't have yeah. a lot of opportunity um, for that. And of course it's required to have such things. So the space can be used. Um, are you, is there a, just, can you go back to the photo that shows your kind of proposal? Yeah, that's good. So it's a little hard, it's hard to read here. You can see the, you know, vertical and again, the line work just kind of bleeds together a little bit. Yeah. But so, the so would be, Behind. You can see the louvers are the light, mm -hmm. light lines. Those would kind of be behind, and then the this grid would kind of exist in front with the wood trim. What color what co would that grid be? Exactly. Yeah, and or and the louvers behind it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, right now I'm proposing the 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 painting of the storefront black here, like this wood that was that was approved um, through the landmark. Uh, my idea was that it would it would all just still be all black. There is a uh, it's not part of this presentation because it's done by a different entity. Is there is an awning that is proposed to go to pretty much cover and hide these louvers as well. Um, that's part of the Madison Reed space. Again, that's all by the the sign vendor and and everything they're doing. We we really have no part of that, but there is proposed to have an awning go in front of these as well. Is that awning? Does that do you, is that has well is has that already received a permit from LPC to be installed? Will it be? Will someone be applying for that so that it's yes? The sign vendor when they were working on it, 
uh, which is kind of what led us to here is they were not allowed, they had to stop kind of what they were doing through their process because the louvers uh, were in violation. Uh, so until the louvers got resolved, they weren't really allowed to install or, or really do much else with the awning at this, at this moment. I don't know if they officially got a permit for it. I'd have to ask. I, I actually do. Well, it's, it's likely they didn't because they, they won't give a permit until, yeah. you know, the violation is cleared for the same area. I right. wondered if maybe just um, if there's any way about this proposal, but uh, either way, would you be able to get in touch with this vendor after the meeting and, um, you know, uh, just give us a, like a little, maybe they have a, a rendering of what their plan is or uh, oh, I, maybe I even... have a, I definitely can get in contact with them. I have a rendering also of what oh. it would look like with the awning. Okay. I think that would be. Okay. If, if I'm happy to, uh, yeah. can I stop sharing and pull that up real quick? Yeah, sure. that would be great. That would be great. And then okay. I'll let other people speak after. Um, let me just find this PDF real quick. Like I said, I was uh, hesitant to, I don't want to show too much, you know, stuff that's not under our license really, or what we're permitting, but I definitely want to show the whole picture though, which is the awning. And that is the, the wrong project. Okay. Sorry, we have another one going on on Broadway as well. Luckily, uh, no louvers there. Okay. Well, hang on one second. I'm sorry. Well, the applicant's looking for that. Hi, everybody. It's been a long time. We should all, I thought we were going to meet in person tonight. No, not Jamie. <laughs> Don't let the committees, only the big board. Oh, only we're not important board. enough. <laughs> I was. I, I checked with uh, Bruce and he said, no, 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 we can be in person. So I was looking forward to seeing you all in person. No, uh, uh, he's here. So far, uh, well, but, and it would have been very hard for Jason. So it worked out okay. Okay. Well, let's organize, let's organize a dinner or something. It's been forever. It has yes. been forever. That would be fun. All right. So I have this pulled up. Okay. Uh, it does not show, I don't have it pulled up for you. It does not show the black, but it shows the awning. It doesn't show the storefront being painted black, but obviously it is. Um, again, when they went in, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Yeah. Oh, there's Bruce. Do, do, do. Okay, so here is the sign vendor drawings. Again, it was just for the, um, the awning. The storefront was approved through our documents as far as the being painted black. It seems like the awning would actually, like let's say from across the street, cover a good portion of the of this area. I, actually, pretty much all of it. Right. It has and that, that little drop yeah. down at the end. Yeah, the, um, yeah. Do you know if this awning is... Um, as part of the staff level, is, do you think, do you know if it's a staff level approval or will we have to see these? I guess I'm going to make my last comment. If you could, I think it's important to know if we're going to see this project again, because the awning is something that the commission has to see. If the awning is, a, I'd like to know in the end, if it's, if it's staff level, uh, you mean, you mean you may need to contact who is the staff person you're working with at LPC for your application? Bernadette and Michelle. Okay, yeah, Bernadette's a, a senior staff. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd like to know after uh, if this is going to require uh, a public hearing, the, the awning. And I'm going to shut up. 
um, and also are you, you're not making, no one's making any adjustments to the storefront infill, right? These numbers, two, six, two, three, these are, they don't make, they have nothing to do with changes to the storefronts, do they? Oh, no, no, they, they don't. Okay, great. That's, that's, All right, so let's open it up to anybody else who has some feelings about, um, you know, this transom situation. Um, Jason, okay. I, I just have a quick question. So we're focused on, uh, I'm seeing this is, is this, is, there's three, three of these um, storefronts. And does this mean that the, the one further down is, is also in um, violation? Uh, the one on the right? This one over here to the right? Are you asking me or are you, are you asking? Uh, me? Yeah, correct. Yes, Greg. Sorry. Uh, I would assume it's in violation because it doesn't, it looks like these three buildings were all like this whole section here was, was built similar time frame, and they did have this historic element. It looks like they all at one point, at least if you go way back, uh, that one is pretty old. And, and, and so, um, I mean, the client is, is the tenant, is that correct? Correct. Madison Reed. Hair, hair color. So this is not this is not the um, the building owner who is uh, needing to replace the the grill to bring uh, his, their historic property into uh, compliance. Correct. I'm, I'm acting on behalf of, of the tenant of this first floor tenant space. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I don't have the longevity with the committee that that others here do, so they can speak to this, but. Is there is there any way that we can request or put in in the resolution that that the the building owner do something similar on on this other portion of the of the building? And I'm I'm putting that out to the committee members. What portion? I'm not sure. I'm clear, Gerald. What do you? Which are you talking about? Uh, Greg, the one on the right is that the north or the south? Um, I, I can't place myself in the street right now. It's uh, uh, to the east. It's to the east, and this okay. building must be numbered 141, maybe 145. It must yeah. have the three addresses. Uh, so, Sorry. Um, can I just I was talking in? about the, the white, the white portion here on the right yeah. of this photograph. I mean, we could create a master plan for this and say that when right. the next applicant comes forward, this is the master plan we would like them all to follow. <clears throat> There should be something that makes sense. So the question I have is this building. Oh, can you please stop moving? Yeah. Yep, yep. Sorry. I'm, I'm gonna leave it on this one is the most current existing. As far as the, the middle tenant and the far right tenant, the far east there, those are just 2022, just last year. So those are probably what they look like right now. Okay. So this is a single building with tripartite reading, right? There's a center bay and then left and right base, but it's a single building, right? Correct. And it's owned by the same owner? From my understanding, yes. Okay. So doing a, a master plan here would be not just ideal, but I think required. I mean, they're already looking a little hodgepodgey, right? Yeah. Jason, can I uh, ask? A, yes, a please, Vicky, go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I just wanted to know from the applicant, like, <clears throat> When you said that you're going to use that square wire uh, in your proposal, right? So, in order to uh, do a again a tripartite on your tripartite elevation <laughs> with wood, with with wood vertical trims and some horizontals, that probably sounds great, and I think it, it's going to blend in well. Um, but I just wanted to know, like, the, you thought this through, right? Like, the ducting behind these louvers requires a certain airflow, and you don't need fins. You're not going to come back, and you probably did fins before because that's what, you know, typically is done. So are you going to have fins behind, and then you're going to put this square, like, chicken wire-like pattern at the front just for appearance? The Yeah, the chicken wire would just just be for appearance to try and make it look a little bit how it before it got removed. 
Um, and really the louvers that you see would still be there, like exactly those same louvers, they would just be recessed. And they're all going to be painted black. When you say all, what are you referring to? Both the chicken wire and the louver, the fins behind. The louver fins are horizontal, right? Correct. And yes, they, uh, the, the idea is that they would all be black. Just so to kind of fade you, back, yeah. All right, would you mind showing that proposed elevation again? Vicki, when you're talking about the wire, you're talking about the lattice work? Yeah. So the, hold on, you'll see. Lattice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the lattice why I that is where's your proposed drawing? So they did, in my opinion, a typical standard uh you know louver ducting and louver solution, right? And then that didn't work out in here. So what I was trying to figure out it, it, so they're not they're not changing anything. In fact, they're just recessing the technical stuff that is required. Uh, and these are, he's not showing you, but behind this, I don't know how big this grid is, but you will see, you know, thick horizontal louvers behind it. So this is just, you know, like chicken wire putting on a cabinet door. I just want to make sure. The grid is five by stand. five. So the idea is that they're five by five squares. Five inches, right? So you'll be seeing that busy louver behind all the horizontal lines. This is just a visual, right? You're just visually covering uh, the horizontal louvers. Correct. So, Jason, Susan, Vera, like, right? I'm, this I mean, is drawn yeah. like it's vacant behind, right? But it's not. You this this, this is. Like a wire mesh at the front, and then lots of thick horizontals running behind it. Yeah, I wonder how. I, I think in that case, it's important to know sectionally how far back we can recess this louver. If it can exactly. be recessed more, then you know that that'll take the edge off of it. Um, I think you know just the general strategy uh, for you know this is a pretty good strategy considering what has to be supplied to these spaces if they're modified. I just, you know, um, being that he's he wants to do a lattice here, I, I, the material of the lattice is metal, uh, right? It's not wood. It, it would it? be metal. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not sure, for, for me, uh, if this drawing, you know, represented what could really be built, and I think that, again, is, is has a lot to do with how recessed the louvers are, um, I think this would be a, a decent prototype for a quote master plan. I'm not sure what other really options uh, we have at this point. Um, yeah. So, I would say know. the rovers um, uh, max recess is about three and a half to four inches. Well, okay, great. He doesn't, right? So I didn't see a section here. No, um, right? No, okay. he doesn't have it. So. Otherwise, we would have seen it. So, Jason, I, I, I totally agree with you. And, and a section, and Jerry here, a section, because um, right now you have what, what we call a trim, right? You have like the border, right? You have the trim, and inside you have the horizontal uh, louvers, right? Or the right. fins, however, if in section they look like fins. Yeah. So, um, and again, that's a standard, you know, modern above door louver detail we would like you to do a section showing us where exactly or how far back you can push that uh what kind of a trim you'll get around is it you, you the, the lattice is metal okay and then the new final exterior trim is probably going to be wood with the horizontal divisions in wood you have to detail that and show us what this might look like when when you push the louvers back if you can three and a half inches that would be great but i think Vicky, we need I, to I see also, a section I also, right i also wonder if i mean obviously we can't go backwards what's there is in violation and we lost the the, the building lost the the i get i assume it they were it was glass lights um, to allow lighting in, in, into the space. Well, so, that's just 
just to make sure there was actually there's a large soffit behind it so those it was all faux it, they weren't actually doing anything just hmm. just to work there there's a soffit right at the top of that storefront door okay uh i assume there's a ce drop ceiling that goes all the way across now the, uh, the drywall ceiling space drywall right okay well in any in any event we can't go backwards we're moving forwards and and i just would put it out to the committee to ask what what are what are the thoughts about uh having contrasting color in other words to 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 allow this this uh new grid to pop i mean all this <laughs> Unfortunately, it sounds like it's all going to be hid by, um, at the end of the day, all, all, all going to be hid behind a, a an awning. But uh, nevertheless, is it is it worth, is it worth uh, looking into the possibility of contrasting, um, you know, what's happening behind the grid and and so that the grid actually reads, uh, rather than just one big black strip, the grid actually pops out. Oh, I, I, I get it now. If, if if you don't mind, can you go back to the photograph? Because I think the building is uh, beige, right? Yeah, you see? So, uh, uh, Gerald, I mean, I, I know yep. what you're saying, but just correct me. So, if the uh, metal lattice, the, the, the metal, the lattice metal, right, that would be the first thing we would see, if that was, let's say, white or off-white, to match the rest of the building, and then the actual louver fins in the back would be black, so they would kind of disappear behind. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I think what would happen at that point is that the black would pop through the white. I, I, I think what would be no, preferable no, no, no. would be black since would be we're receding. doing the, but since, anyway, uh, since well, since since the uh, trim work is all going to be black, um, it would seem to me that maybe the the gr the grill would the lattice work would be black and and. Uh, I don't know what the idea is for the the louvers. I guess if they're wood, um, maybe they can be a a, a gray. No, no, the louvers are metal. That's what I thought. So okay. So uh, wait, the the grid is metal. I I just saw something on. Did I misread the uh, the plan? I thought there was something there about wood. Um, no. But no, in any event, much. whatever the material is, I would think that the the louvers could could be a either. You know, a, 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 a light, a, a, some sort of a gray or, or something just lighter so that it reads more like this above the Fonda. If you see the sign there on the right above Fonda, you can see that. Yeah, if we paint the louvers the color of the building, which is about that kind of light white beige color, and then the grid was black, yeah. it would create more of this effect. I mean, I don't, I don't see that as a bad effect. I think that's what the original effect was. The, Okay, but we can't tell them what to do or how to design it. So what are no. we asking for, Jason? We're asking for a section showing what what this layering would look like, and then maybe you can show us what the color scheme is that they finally come up with. Because I think Jerry's got a good point. This creates a black hole, right? And when you see it in comparison to the center bay, there's sort of a bit of lightness there. Uh, and so it's not up to us, but can we ask that? Can we? I would be, I'm happy. I'm happy to do whatever. Um, well, we I, want it to look lovely, so whatever we can, you know. And, and I 100% uh, want to be a good steward to the project and, you know, to architecture. So I'm 1000% on the same page with that. I um, am happy to put together if it might help a, a maybe a rendering that shows both options. So yeah. we can kind of see what that contrast, you know, because I also agree. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know your name, but the uh, I also don't think it would be bad if the louvers were black and there was a light grid in front, too. I feel like that would also pop. But I definitely get the ideology of having the louvers light and the dark grid to kind of match, you know, what was existing. And we could put together two renderings and compare and contrast and see what, you know, makes sense. Yeah, so sorry that I was late. Can I just ask you to just show one of the panels? when Ramos pizza was there and then one of the really older historic panels. Is that possible? You would like to see, let's see, hang on, let me go back up to the top here. So you already have that strategy in the in that image you just showed, right? Okay. 
Yeah, Lizink is there and there's Ramo. That's good. Hold on. Stop. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to see. That's great. Okay. Just could I just look at it for a minute? Sure. Good old Lizink. Wish it were still there. Yeah, I moved uh, on to Dwayne Street when Lizink opened. <laughs> And and you were in there, Roger, probably half the time. I lived there. I lived at 165 when I was an impoverished young man. That's hilarious. That's, what a place that was. So, okay, I'm just looking at the... So, it was the the entablature, sort of. Right, right. Is, is, is the same, was the same. In fact, the original one actually had um, signage in it. As you can see, there, there's lettering. Below that was... Um, also, uh, a uh, uh, an infill where where the at the top of the storefront, the the one on the right has random vents in it, uh, and the other ones I believe were that broken glass, the broken glass squares that appear in the um, Fonda um, transom area, although it's not a transom. So. <laughs> It looks like it was a little mismatched to begin with. Uh, then when we go to Ramo and Lezink, it's kind of a mess. It's better now. I'm just I'm just analyzing. It's not. It's it's just not horrendous as it stands when you walk by the street. But since I didn't see the yeah. proposal, I'm going to I'm going to back off and listen now. But ultimately, I would love to do nothing and just keep it as is. But. Um you know, because that awning, I think, is going to do a lot to, you know, you, you, the general populace probably won't notice much. But well, well, that would be a lost. That would be a lost opportunity, you know, to to do nothing. Well, yeah, and that's and that's why we're proposing, you know, um, some strategies here to, to you know, get us all on the same page. Well, it's amazing that the double window bays became three window bays at some. Uh, point you know what I. I I had to do. I had to double check that. It's very remarkable. Is it? Is I mean, is this the same building? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> the same building. They obviously tore down, tore down one. Uh, no, they didn't. It's it's still there on the on the east end. Where did they fit in that third building? Okay, the building. Uh, no, that this is crazy. The building on the east and the west are the same. Yeah, yep. they just split it. They split it. You know, so they right, instead right. of having. I, I large, actually think this small small building. building. They had three small right. buildings. Right. I think the building on the left was torn down, and there was another bay added. The uh, five-story building on the left does not appear to be the same five-story on the right. Although the cornice, you're right. The cornice, no, the cornice looks the same. Looks very it's similar. Just... No, I don't know. I don't know, Bruce. Those, okay. Those, those corbels. The windows are, are different. You're right. There's, there's <laughs> four four bays. On We're the doing left some historical archaeology right. here. Uh, right. right. Okay, that's 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 wild. Okay, thank you. Well, Bruce, it's what do you great. think about their proposal, though? Since you're a long, you know, you've been around a long time on the. That's what I'm saying, Jason. Unfortunately, I got here too late to real to see nothing but the very tail end of the proposal and the discussion. So, if you want in two minutes just to show me one shot of the proposal. Yes, I think that would be I good. Oh, you well, have a lot well, of Bruce is looking at that. Yes, I, Roger, go. I, I've been there forever as well. <laughs> and I have to say that um, we've dealt with this venting challenge over and over. And I think that what they've got there is is a good strategy. Um, I think if we get an awning on it, that will help disguise it. And I think personally, um, using more historic colors like a dark green or something, that we would have more more appropriateness than black um but i think this is going in the right direction so are you going to show me the um one shot of the proposal as as jason suggested? yeah i just don't want to i know i don't i don't want to make anyone sick so i'm just trying to be careful about my moving but let me move exactly uh you and here's just a here i'll take you through this too this is just a progression of from yeah. 2009 you can see the three right. spaces how they just sort of changed throughout the yeah okay the years yeah I miss Blogons too. Keep going. Okay, that's now. Yeah, and then here is our specific location. We'll right. Zoomed in versions of it, and then here okay. is where it's at now. And this is the proposal. Um, I, don't, I don't need to see those details. Just let me see it. Do you have a rendering of the finished your finished proposal? The, 
the the best the, the, the rendering I have is and because it just really wasn't going to do much because I was thinking it was all going to be black, but um, is just the the grid mesh with the louvers recess, the grid mesh in front of it, with adding back in some of the wood trim pieces that were also removed. Oh. Hey, Bruce, let me just yeah. add something here. Um, so what, what happened is that they got permitted, they did construction. When they came up to the louver space that is actually now going to have ducting and you know heating and cooling uh, behind uh, it, they resolved it the way that you see it black in that photograph, and uh, LPC came after them. Huh. So that, that's why that, that's where the history is. Why are they here? Came after it's them what the, on what grounds? They didn't get permission to oh. install that black line that, oh. the, you know, the existing condition halfway through construction, they ran into an issue. They resolved it, but forgot to ask LPC right. and us. I see. That's what the issue is. I see. If you show him the existing building now, um, the photograph you see bruce this is what they no no the existing whatever you this oh, used no. to be there that is true it's true this is existing now all right so you see bruce here they yeah. were chugging along ran into a problem they resolved it like any contractor would right and this isn't historical so that's why they're here so in other so, words they this is this is the as-built existing condition that landmarks sort of nailed them on this is that's what they right. modified yeah yeah, now, yeah. Now, you, without now, a permit. Now yeah, I really it. understand, and now uh, I, don't. I knew and you were missing that little part. <laughs> now I don't like it, having walked down that block for thirty-three years. I don't like. I don't like this. But so what? Who am I? Go Does ahead. anyone else have any comments? Because I think if I, if it's okay, I'd love to get that rendering of these ideas quote and a section. section, and then. I think we can, I don't know if that's some business that we can handle offline to sway us in which direction we want to go. It sounds like we want to not only deal with this approval or denial, but we also want to make a whereas that this building uh, deserves a master plan so that this doesn't happen to the other two bays. And yeah, hold that's it, it for a couple of days. I just want to add, I yeah, want to add sure. to. The intent here, of course, with a, with properties like this, I, I would assume the intent is that, you know, regardless of whatever awning is there, if these tenants move out, um, you know, the awning can go with it. And, oh and God, at least yeah. we have a, a building that looks, you know, uh, that, that, that fits appropriately into the neighborhood, unlike that that um, Eastern Bay that we saw earlier. Yeah. Is, is that a is that applied to tan and a and a back screen or are you really somewhere and have a real tan? <laughs> it's uh it's it's you know public school spring break, so oh, that's cool. home, hey, exodus from the city. That's great. Can you go back one more shot while you're making your decision so I can see the existing condition exactly before Madison Screed Freed, Freed was there and, and, and did that vent there. Good, which is more appropriate. The original. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. Okay, so Jason, we're all in agreement, and and the applicant, you know, sort of understands what we want. This, this if you can replicate, you know, this kind of gentle and sort of hierarchical reading, you know, a primary and secondary, and then tertiary in between with the vertical posts and the trims and wood, uh, and still marry it with louvers and fins that are now actually you know, providing airflow, then that would be terrific. Yeah, happy to put that together. Um, I will coordinate with the sign vendor so I can have clarity on the awning aspect as, as was requested earlier. And then um, I just need a, a day or two and I can get some of the renderings in the section put together. So early, I, I don't know how this works with, um, you know, do we schedule another meeting? Do I email it to you? Because I can have this done by early. I think you you could email it to Lucy, and then uh, she'll send it to all of us. And I think I, 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 someone else might speak on whether this is okay. Then we could just, uh, you know, we used to sidebar on these type of things uh, either before the full board or whatever. I mean, I'm happy to write uh, a resolution. I just think we're a little bit. All of us want to maybe write a positive one, but we'd like to see some backup as to what, you know. 
what's going to be done because it's yes. you sound you sound like the type of guy who's caring about the building and i know that your hands are a bit tied on what you can do to get back to what the uh design was and right. also supply ventilation that is very true um, so okay is that does that work lucy or and and roger and the guys who've been there before when we don't actually make a final decision at the meeting can, can we can we handle That's it that fine. way that's okay. Fine. And you can okay. just put if he doesn't send it to you at the DFO, we resolve that you request it for it, and then you re reverse Got it. your okay. decision. So it it sounds like we're you want to go out. You've almost got us all on the uh, approval of this, or or you know that we would write an affirmative resolution and and thank you. Just send us the stuff. Make good on that, and uh, I'll be sure to you know we'll distribute it, and I'll take the time to write the resolution um, if everybody likes it like like that. Okay, um, what is the, and I greatly appreciate the consideration and willing to look at it, you know, a little differently than the formal. Um, what, 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 is it, what is Lucy's, do I have Lucy's email? I don't know if I have, I just wanna make sure I have. I think we can probably throw it in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, or if you wanna just rattle off your email right now, I'll send you an email. What's your email? My email is gwayman which okay. is G-W-E-H-M-A-N, uh -huh. and then the okay. little design, and then it's Intertech Design, uh, which Give is that one. Like it sounds, it says I-N-T-E-R-T-E-C-H, and then design, D-E-S-I-G-N, dot net. Okay, I'm going to put Lucy on this too. I'll save everybody else, and you can just send this stuff back to us. Perfect. Okay. I will get that to you early next week, and I guess we'll take it from there. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. I how do I stop sharing now? Okay, so now we have the Boltex building. You need to um, vote. You need to vote, Jason. Oh, sorry. So, uh, uh, is everybody in favor of? Yeah, I just need Andrea I... on the on on her screen, and then we can do a roll call real quickly. So, so she comes on. I'll just do it quickly. Um, any opposed? Any abstain? Any recusal motions carry. I won't. Have a okay, great. So who's here for 32 and 34 Walker Street? Second to move them over. And then I'll give my little preamble. We don't need to hear about the history of Walker Street or, you know, if George Washington, you know, lived in the building, let's get right to the meaty stuff about why you need to come to us and why you're going to uh, the 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 uh, public hearing. Um, Cedric, I moved you over. Is there anyone else I need? Hello, to Cedric. Over? And while they're moving over, I just want to say that it was the last, the last, very last outpost of the uh, the wholesale. Uh, textile district, which was, of course, Forty Worth Rules was the ruling body for the whole wholesale. It lasted until like ten years ago. It was, and Bestex was there until like three years ago, two years ago. That's all. <laughs> Cedric, is there anyone you want me to move over besides yourself? Uh, I guess I'll be leading this. But there's also Gary Romanello and uh, Steve Thompson on on uh, somewhere in in the chat. Yeah, you know, Gary's here. You can see him. And who was the other person, sir? I, I think they're together, most probably. They're sitting next to each other. So Gary and Stephen. I don't have a Stephen on the screen, sir. Uh, he's with Gary, actually. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And who who should I give um, privileges to chair? Uh, I think I'll lead this uh, at this point, if that's okay. So. Um, second, I'll give this to the people. Okay, well, uh, first of all, uh, hello for the CB1 member. Uh, my name is, and thanks for listening to us. My name is Cedric Aboud. Uh, I'll be the developer on the job along with Gary Romanello. And uh, we have Steve uh, Thompson from Soma Architects as well uh, on the call. So this is a, a very brilliant design. Like we're very early on. We understand we're very early on uh, in the presentation, uh, but we really want to have your, engage, your feedback uh, and your engagement early on um uh, and, and understand uh, uh, which direction better what's missing what what's your view 
uh, if that's okay, and then we will follow with more design development as, as we move along and, and very quickly. So, uh, since we presented, so this, let me so let me ask you a question, Cedric. You yeah. actually you currently don't have an application in with the Landmarks Commission, or do so you? So that um, what we submitted is um, a request for the application, and that was the first step we were advised to is to have a hearing uh, or to have a CB1 meeting uh, where you 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 hear the project. You listen. So to you it. so you've been assigned a staff member, and they've seen Absolutely. some sort of. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lucy, did I get this correct? What do you mean if you have it correct? I don't see you sharing the screen if that's what you're asking, sir. <laughs> In terms of steps, apologies for that. Take your time. Can I share the screen? Yes, sir. I gave you privileges. Okay. Would you like me to share what you sent me or uh, you're having I'm, issues here? I'm having issues here, but I'm going to try to do it. Okay, I'll give you a minute or so. How's the apple, Bruce? It, it's a pair, but I got to tell oh, you, Jason, okay. wherever you are, okay. I got to go right now. I'm glowing. I am just dying to, to, to do that. Are, are you, you must be in the Caribbean or something. St. Bart's, yes. Oh, man. I want to go yeah. right now. Well, next meeting, we'll, we'll all take it here. <laughs> Gary, we seem to have lost Cedric. Would you like me to pass the privileges to you? Um, yeah, Cedric seems to be going on and off. Uh, he had, did, did he send you his presentation if for some reason he can't share his screen? He's not even here. He left. So I don't know what's happening. I just passed it over to Gary. Yeah. And but he has he has the deck. I apologize. He's let me back. let me wait, try wait, wait. Him, let me, Give me a minute. Let me try him offline. He goes working with that. I'll give him. Yeah, it looks like he's. It looks like he's there he back goes. on Lucy. Yeah, it takes a minute to move it over. A second, excuse me. If not, Cedric, I can share what you sent me. Oh, there, there it go. goes. There it goes. Oh, I guess it didn't work. No, it's there. Hi, very much apologies for this. So it's the first time I use. Uh... So can you see my screen? I think we can. I'm, I'm seeing a screen. Yeah, we're viewing Cedric Abood's webinar. Okay, and you see the the Boltex building? The, the yeah. I see just a white sheet. Yeah, we don't see the deck, Cedric. Also, Greg was the present presenter last time. Am I uh, still on? Greg, Greg was, yes. He received my email. So he's going to, he said he. Because he still appears, but I don't see the current presenter's face. Just uh, it's rather confusing. Anyway, 
whatever. You don't have their faces up, Bruce. You don't, you're not missing. They're not, they don't have their faces up. I see. Yeah, I apologize. I think I am still on. This is Greg. Um, but I can drop off. I'm, I accidentally hung around, I think, too long. So how okay. are other people here? <laughs> but Greg, thanks for, for acknowledging you're sending the stuff. I got your email. <clears throat> I'm sorry, can someone present uh, the deck? I, I can't do it from here. It doesn't seem to work. Okay, we see page one. Let's go to okay, page fantastic. two. I think was fine on this one. So, um, okay, we're we're. Okay, we go to page Just three. let me know when you want me to move. Yeah, uh, page three, if possible. Nice. Okay. Okay, um, if we scroll down a bit more, uh, I think to the aerial views. And okay, so uh, we're talking here of the corner of Walker and Church uh, in Tribeca East uh, in the historic district. And uh, we have two buildings, 34 Walker and 32 Walker uh, that we are looking to, uh, to merge together into a single building. So um, uh, I'm, I'm, are you familiar with the, with the corner? So if you look at the existing site photos, uh, on the slide below. Yes, I think we all are familiar. It's an L-shaped building and then the low-lying yes, corner absolutely. building. Yeah, that was absolutely. a restaurant so, for a long time. Jason, can we see the historic photo just for 10 seconds, the one above? I guess that's yes. the only one they have. That looks great. It, that building's long gone, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very thank cool. you. And I do have another photo here on my deck that okay. I will share uh, as well. So if you go down on the, on the existing side photos, so page five, yes. So we have these two buildings. One of them is a cast iron building. It's Paramount Boltex. It's, um, it's a textile uh, distribution uh, and manufacturing. And uh, in the middle on the corner, you have, uh, so the, the 34 Walker is an L shape cast iron. And then you have a 32 Walker, which is currently a restaurant called Bel Rev. Uh, that was um, so we're looking to merge these two. One, the, the cast iron was built 1868, Bell Rev 1954, and from our understanding, Bell Rev is not designated as historic. Um, and um, uh, from our understanding, so that would be okay uh, with your permission to uh, demolish it. And uh, the idea is to merge these two into a single, if you want, new built cast iron project. Uh, and uh, we're going as of right. We're really going uh, as per zoning. We're following the the TMU uh, FAR of five, and uh, and that would be closing the corner as is, using 100% coverage, adding a floor, and then the penthouse. So if uh, we scroll down uh, further, uh, further down as well. So that's the zoning analysis, and that's kind of the bulk of the building. In dark gray, you see the existing L shape, and in light gray, you see uh, what we're what we will be building. So we're closing the corner, we're adding a floor, and then we're doing the penthouse. Uh, and then if you go scroll down to the proposal, uh, that's kind of high level direction we're going, which is replicating whatever we have, restoring the existing facades. So if George Washington was here, he would be like. Please restore this building, make it modern, close, reopen the windows, uh, and and actually we're kind of it. We feel like this is the right direction for it. We've been going through many schemes, many renderings, and so forth, and we understand this is a bit sloppy, uh, but that's kind of the direction we're going. Um, so the idea is that full cast iron, uh, adding at the six, and here you can't see the penthouse, but. Um, I was looking to share with you some ideas we had on the penthouse. Uh, if I can share later, maybe you can see it. Um, and that's the general feel. Like to 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 give it back, it's it's whole cast iron feel in a way that like 55 Reed has, 
uh, or cast iron ha uh, iron has like these uh, prominent building, uh, and we feel this corner is is well suited for that. Now, in terms of colors, we're going with uh, the badge of these cast iron, so in, very in line with with whatever is existing there now. Uh, although we feel the color is a bit lighter than what it was before, so we're suggesting to go with the same scheme that was approved for 55 Reed Street, which is a darker beige. Uh, but we're still working through this. And now, if you look at the crown, so if you look at the crown at the top of the building, um, we're kind of we took it from the fourth from the fifth floor, and we're adding it to the sixth floor, and we're completing it. So that's the, one of the major differences we did. Uh, on the facades, we're reopening all the windows that are currently shut, uh, especially on the south side. So south, uh, on, on south, if you're on southeast on Walker, these windows are currently shut, um, and, and we're storing the whole thing. And also, we are removing the fi the fire escapes. If Can that's I... okay as well. Yes, of course. This <clears throat> doesn't look like the surrounding area of the current lot. Uh, we are uh, again. Apologies on this. We, okay. we are working through this. We are working through this. Okay. We, so that's we, just we, kind we of. Try. That's true, though, right? Th these buildings that I see adjacent to this proposal are not actually the buildings that are adjacent to. The, the lot. Is that correct? I. Uh, the, the one that are directly next to it uh, are. Yes. Um, are I think current, but the one that further in the back, especially like. This tower that's a bit um, that's not very straight. We are working through these, uh, and also there are other details, the trees and all of that. Apologies for that. We've been going through many schemes, but in terms of it's, it, we're focusing a bit on on the bulk of the building, and we understand also that the retail is not much, very accurate. Like we have a few more details that we will be working through and, and presenting. We are working through that, and, and we'll have an, an updated version very quickly. Okay, Please one more. Me and I won't. You go ahead, Tristan. I'm so sorry. Uh, just, just. Yeah. Material of the the let's call it fill-in portions of the building. Would you actually be casting iron, or would it? What, what do you? What, what are your thoughts on that? So we are actually uh, yes. The, the idea is to go cast iron. Uh, we have uh, so uh, uh, the Robinson Company from Alabama. There, uh, from what I understand, they're the main guys who do all the. Like they're the major contractor on on, on cast iron uh, in the city and, and nationwide, and they're here next week, and, and we're going through the design to better understand uh, and uh, and the, the construction element of it to better understand if this is feasible. From our understanding, it is, and they can replicate it fully exactly as it is with the same details, and um, that's that's the whole uh, that's the ID, and the penthouse would be set, uh, different. The the way the penthouse is moving is kind of a glass house. One more question before Bruce goes. Sorry, so sorry. Uh, I'm, I, I just uh, <clears throat> are there other pages in this deck that give yes. like very serious details of what the construction of this is? Uh, Sec we'll sections, be... uh, you know, sightline drawings. So, if you if you if you scroll down, there is like a, a kind of uh, yeah, you have. Uh, this section okay. to give to give an idea of the uh, of of how it is. Um, okay, but like details and really fleshed out stuff. We, yeah, we, I, we, I mean, we, Bruce, we, we, Bruce we, you sh anything. you should go right after me. But I'm just my general thought on this. It looks a little bit light on the details for us to really. Full. Um, but if if you're not going to be able to show us like storefront sections and window details and okay, but here's some stuff. Okay, all right, Bruce, what did you? What were your thoughts? All I was going to say was was that you know the initial sketches are very interesting, um, but this if landmarks told the applicant to come to us and these are aspirational drawings. I mean, usually we, we go through, this is a major, you know, it's not the biggest project in the world, but it's, it, it's visible, it matters. And he's saying it's, it's a work in progress. We don't have exact details to, to consider. I mean, if they want our advice as they move forward, great, we can do our best, but there's nothing to approve or disapprove here. Yeah, that, that's what I was getting. I mean, if you can deliver that rendering, I'm sure Bruce and I would be thrilled to have that type of building there. But we can't just go on your promise and a
fruition. So I think we might be just a little bit early here yeah, to, uh, weigh, to weigh in. F fully agree, fully agree. And, and uh, it's, we're looking to get uh, fully ready uh, in the next hearing and, and some prelim feedback and direction and, and kind of uh, would be fantastic uh, if possible. If possible. We understand it cannot be approved as it is now. Uh, okay. But we wanted well, to have my some, feedback, some feed yeah. so that we're all kind of involved and the community has its input very early on, if that's okay. Okay. I think I'll start then, uh, because I think, again, I don't, we don't, I don't think we need to see kind of more. I, my feedback would be, uh, if you're going to start doing a building like this and uh, making it in cast iron and uh, then also restoring the Boltex building and, you know, some of the principles that we stand by here would be, you know, you have it right with the street wall height and, and we'd like to see whatever penthouses you have set back and ideally not even visible from the street. Uh, the storefront looks a little contemporary. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I think, you know, if any other people want to. Jason, you have someone from the public, Leah, that wants to speak on this. Should I unmute? Well, them? first, let, let's hear. I mean, I don't know if Bruce has anything else to say. It sounds like Bruce and I are kind of board wants to say anything about this, let's let them speak and then we'll let the public uh, person speak. Um, so I'll so open I, it I don't up. know if you see the, the hands going up, but I, I just have a question to the board. I mean, what what is the general, this is one of those situations I, I was always, there's nothing here to opine right now, but there is a very, Pretty direct gesture that there's a restoration of the two existing buildings and then an infill that's going to look exactly like the historic buildings, even though it's not a historic building. Um, that feels very Disney to me. Doesn't feel authentic. It, it uh, my, my take on historic preservation has always been that not to replicate something that is no longer there. What is the board's, uh, I guess, um, theory on this or, or history and, and experience? And I was hoping, yeah, Bruce and, and Byron and, and a few others could speak to that. Well, I think generally the consensus is to not, you know, Disneyification is bad. Uh, personally, I'll just chime in and say, if someone's willing to spend the money to make a beautiful cast iron building on the corner and put a penthouse on top of it and restore a building from the 19th century, I probably could be, you know, moved to 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 be in favor of that. I, I couldn't do it based on all this kind of little information. And I think, you know, the true preservation was this would say, no, this is not a good idea. But, you know, you're right, Gerald, it's a good point. Um, and I think it's something that we would we could weigh individually when when we're given you know a full uh kind of set um you know that's my opinion i don't know vicky anybody else have a have, have yes they, you mind if yeah. i go next go vicky yes yeah so i just want to clarify for the applicant that it's wonderful that you're here and that we you know sort of anticipate this project coming into the neighborhood uh the rule is that whatever set you're going to send to the building department to get a building department approval, you must send that to us and to Landmark simultaneously. So that requires a full set of drawings explaining to us exactly what you intend to, to provide. And, you know, that whole set then goes to the building department. So th there's sort of an order and you must do it. Uh, at this sort of early stage, I would uh, agree with Jason. I'm sorry, Gerald. I think that giving us kind of a historical uh, looking building, uh, cast iron, fantastic. Um, I think we should try to keep this, you know, as uniform to the neighborhood as possible. I think we have a lot of individuality, you know, uh, voicing its, itself in every corner. And I think doing something that blends in, doesn't have to stand out, just do decent, you know, good quality architecture. Um, yes, the ground floor, the commercial, uh, 
I'm sorry, I will be going for something that has a bit, a bit of a base. I understand every developer wants to have large windows uh, that open up into commercial space, but that's not always the best thing. Um, so some detailing, doing like a water table, expressing some uh, trims around uh, the opening, I think will be required. And then personally, I, 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 we need to see uh, that, um, penthouse and definitely it's sight lines from uh, where it's visible. If it is visible, what does it look like? Thank you. Uh, th thank you for the comments and uh, Gerald to, to your, to, to your point, like we, we, we tried many, many schemes and trying to blend in modern with, with cast iron and, and it, it's, it, it, we came to the conclusion that it felt not only pragmatic, it felt also aesthetic and for the neighborhood to just complete it uh, and, uh, and and make it uniform, if that makes sense. Um, and we'll keep on exploring to see if there is any other way to it, but it just naturally always gravitated back to, like we even tried having a, a corner that's different with double void and so forth. And, you know, just completing this building and having it, having the same impact as when you pass by 55 read, which the first time I saw it, I just stopped. I'm like, what's, what, what's that? And um, it just felt right. It just felt right. Although the architects wanted to express more and so forth. So I kept on graduating back, back to, okay, let's go back to being simple, clean, timeless, and in line with whatever was here, kind of finish what was started. Like uh, if we were trying to do a new cast iron, I would agree like we're being a bit fake here, but we're just completing something that's, a bit that looks a bit off, right? Like, like every time we mention this corner, it's like, please let someone do it. Like something is wrong here. So that's how it felt like. And um, this is why we wanted early on also as well to have your input to see if the community would be, or the community board would be um, uh, <laughs> which direction they would prefer and, and um, having a sense on, okay, should we get more creative or should we follow on, on the cast iron? Just felt. Um, no, I have to agree that 55 read, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but 55 read is a gem and it was recently renovated. And, um, I, I think I, I even like the color of the window trims. It's terrific. But when you say you're going to open them up, uh, how is, are they just going to pivot? Because you're showing them as single panes. Um, what is, I'm sorry. The windows, when you said they're going to open. Oh, no, the uh, windows uh, are going to be operable. Oh, so the windows, uh, we had uh, a couple of options uh, here. So if we can look back at, at the presentation, uh, I, I would like to share a couple of it's things. It's a single pane of glass, right? For yeah. Opening. So if it's okay, uh, so you would pivot. We, uh, like would this? it be okay to have them as sash windows? So they open up a part of it from the, from the bottom up, like slides up. Is, would that be okay? Well, no, then, then you would have a double hung. Um, can, if we can, can you render them as, I, I don't think we should be designing this building. We should be given. No, the... we're not oh, absolutely. We're just asking. I agree. I just, I just want to chime there, in too and, and wait, clarify. Wait, wait, I don't, wait. I don't mean to interrupt either, but I just want to clarify. I don't, I don't know that there needs to be any sort of extreme, um, you know, creative stroke here or anything like that. But I do believe very strongly that, um, there should be a delineation of what's existing fabric and what's new fabric. Uh, I don't, I don't care how they do it. I'm not going to design it for them, but I'm just saying that, that uh, wow. to, to fill it in and make it all look like it's been there since the beginning, I, I just think is the wrong move personally, but, uh, and, well, and professionally and professionally, like that. that's, Jerry, that's what I've been taught professionally. Vote. When you vote, you can have that expression. I mean, well, I'm, I'm trying to give a, a little bit of direction. <laughs> no, don't, because this is landmarks committee and we're here to retain a historical feel. And uh, when when they present, then we all have individual thoughts and we can vote and see also, most importantly, what the community uh, tends to like about living in this neighborhood. Right, anyway. I just want to clear, clarify, we're not gonna vote on anything tonight. That, no, there's no, no. To, okay, great. Right. right. No, because they, they don't provide a set that goes to 
D -O -D -O -L -D -C. Could, could I just say before I'm going to go, I happen to agree with Jason totally. And I think we, we can belabor and belabor. Let's move forward and let this go on. And I happen to agree and I could be convinced the way it looks. I kind of like it. So there. Yeah. I, just, I, I would like to say that I agree with Susan and Jason and Vicki and there as as for the as for Gerald's, you know, as for ideology and typo typology, that discussion, Gerald, has been going on cyclically, like what is in regarding abstraction this decade, realism next decade, abstraction now, which is back again. This has been going on for 40 years. There have been times like the building on uh, Erickson Place and Hudson, which was, it was in fashion to do a replication. Uh, um, what's, how can I forget? Morris Ashby used to come to us for advice before we voted. And I am impressed that this applicant came to us not for uh, validation, but for interest, for advice. Morris always used our advice before he came back. And, you know, then there were times where it was out of fashion and called Disneyfication to do a replication. But this is one building, and I think. Just for my sake, in terms of these developers, because there is an existing building, I think it would look rather odd to create a contemporary building that is one unit, that is one uh, block and lot with the existing building and make it look completely different. I think that would be, that would be precious, uh, just in my opinion. Then you could take 71. Reed Street, which Morris designed, there was a restoration of an exact uh, existing late 19th century, turn of the 20th century loft building, and he replicated it. It's one building, but he replicated it as, as a photo negative in zinc instead of terracotta and stone. So that was a compromise position. So, I, you know, I don't think the developers who are here will ever actually build what that sketch says. It will, a building of that size will be valued engineered without all of that exquisite detail by the time it's built. But who is the developer and who is the architect? Okay, so, yes, yes. So the developer, uh, I'm, uh, myself and Gary, I'll let Gary join in. Uh, but uh, I've, I've been quite active uh, in the UK. So our planning application were really heavy in, in the, the role bore of Chelsea and Kensington, where uh, we've been doing also historic restorations, uh, along with other sites in the UK. I've been also active in the Middle East, uh, and um, essentially, it's uh, the, our second year in the US as developer. But in terms of architects, uh, Soma Architects, who's led by my brother, is uh, it's called Soma S O M A Soma. S -O -M -A, Soma? Yes, uh, and. Um, okay. So they have been active uh, in the city, and one of the projects was uh, in Tribeca, uh, 45 Park Place, and and another one uh, addition in Lisbonart. Uh, I don't have the address here. So, um, but it's it, in terms of architecture, we typically focus more on uh, on on modern design, uh, while in development, I'm more on the historic side, and this is why I'm kind of pushing for it to go uh, historic. This is how I'm feeling it. it, it this building, uh, at least, and we tried. I, we really tried to go modern, to to even to try to do different bays, uh, the window bays, so that we try to do a little play here, and it always goes back to finish it the way it is. And and uh, Vicky also noted on the retail, like we would put uh, a base uh, and and try to make it a bit uh, a bit uh, in line with with whatever you'd expect there. 45 Park never got completed, right? No, 45 Park was not completed. We were not the developers on it. We were the right. architects. And, and that was and, going and, to also be the uh, cultural center, right? Uh, I believe so. I believe yes. so, but okay. we're not involved directly. Okay. Um, and the developer Gary, basically to... skipped town. <laughs> okay, yes. sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I'm Gary. just going to one other uh, comment. Uh, I think for me, you're off to the right start. I don't know where it finishes. But it's definitely a better start than many, many a projects we've seen before us. Um, I think we could end our comments with that, unless anybody really has some strong feelings they want to share now. And then I think we should just hear from that person from the public, since they 
uh, are oh. here. And, uh, you know, again, if anybody has anything that they really feel like they need to say, uh, otherwise, it sounds like we'll be meeting Cedric and Eric uh, later down their their journey with uh, <clears throat> the Landmarks Commission, and I, I'm I'm excited. Uh, uh, one one small uh, last comment, if that's okay. So uh, on the presentation, the last deck, I believe, or in the, one of the last slides, uh, you can see that this building uh, was actually uh, selected by Nice Serda for the passive house. Uh, we got the passive house grant, uh, which was. Uh, Quite a good surprise to have. So essentially, if we can build this in passive house specs, we get the, the we were awarded the grant for it. And uh, Gerald, to your point, this was really like <laughs> very prelim design where where we use fifty five read as a as as a starting point. And this was very early on, and then it developed to what we have currently, and it will keep on developing onto what we present to you uh, hopefully uh, in the next coming days. Uh, just, just to clarify my position, I'm not saying whether I like it or not. I prefer to know what the building's doing and, uh, and how it operates. I'm thrilled to hear that it's going to be passive house and all the rest. And again, regardless of what it looks like, um, you know, I understand this is landmarks. I, I would just personally, I would, and professionally, I, I prefer to see uh, original fabric looking original and 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 something else, even if it looks like the original, at least. That it that it there's some delineation to say, hey, this is you know if I don't know. Uh, as a realist, I happen to like Bell Rav, so <laughs> yeah. adds a little bit yeah, of well, character to the today, neighborhood. We, we've had uh, we, we've had uh, actually, if you look at Tribeca Citizen, like uh, I think there is the community is quite uh, uh, eager to know more of, of the plans on, on this building, and and you can see that Bell Rav is quite popular, and people also seem to to like it. Uh, but, but we feel that this corner needs to be, it has more potential and you'll have an, a new space there that, that will give life to this corner even more. It will reinforce the whole aspect. And with the developments going on in 30, 31 Lispinar that was approved by LPC and you have 14 White Street and you have 100 Franklin, like the, all this area is becoming very interesting more and more. Well, I can uh, say that I, Chair I, Jason has spoken and we can move on, right? Yes. Well, we can move on to dinner, uh, Bruce. Well, only we have one person to hear, right? Yeah, let, let's hear this person. I'm very interested to hear what they have to say. We get very few public people. So, so who are you and what would you like to tell us? You're not going to hear them tonight because I keep telling them to unmute themselves and they're not responding. Who, who is this person? Do they have it's a name? Someone named Lee. Oh, there she goes. She unmuted. Go ahead, Leah. Yeah, I'm, I'm Leah. I'm, I'm actually... Um, affiliated with Bell Rev and I just kind of was tuning in to kind of just see the plans of like what was developed and and I understand everybody's you know it, jobs are to talk about buildings and um like you know what he was saying about Bell Rev it is it is a pretty big um neighborhood community bar um and it brings a lot of um it brought a lot of hope like in the pandemic uh for it to be there uh when we were all you know going through a rough time but um also, too, there was a lot of labor that went into it. You've got 32 employees that um, are there as well. So we're talking about buildings. I wanted to talk about people and taxpayers in the community, but also and it's a very big networking hub. Um, and it would truly, truly be devastating, I think, to the neighborhood um, if it was gone. I think it also brings a lot of people to the community. Um, it also gives all these people that were that are in these art galleries that are around and like locally um, a place to also network as well. Um, if you're just talking about building a building for another penthouse in the neighborhood, that's also vacant. I mean, it, to me, it just, there's a, there's a bunch of expensive, fancy apartments that don't seem to have people living in them. And there's so much life on that corner. It would be very sad to see it go. And that's just my opinion. And I just wanted to throw that out there to you all as well. And I understand that, um, we are small uh, compared to this big building project, but I just wanted to share those um, those thoughts with you all. Uh, Leah, I apologize. I'm going to jump in. You are small, but you are loved, and we appreciate. Like we, we can see in the comments today. Like if you look at the Tribeca Citizen, like we thought people would be talking about the Cast Iron Building, and they, all they can talk about is Bell Rev, and and how much they love yeah. it. So we we understand that, but the corner is not disappearing. The corner is going to have a new retail space that's going to be uh, there available to, for. Uh, whoever wants it, it's not disappearing. 
So you're looking Same at rent. possibly <laughs> opening this up. Yeah, right. So are you possibly thinking um, about like potentially having a bar at the bottom of this like beautiful, you know, uh, building that you're building that's, you know what I mean? Like, is that something that is in maybe the plan or is it just like whoever wants to purchase it or? It's, it's there is no restrictions. It's whoever wants it. Okay. All right. Thank you, because that is important, although right. not yeah. under our purview. And, you know, um, we love having you there. And we also really appreciate you coming and giving us your thoughts, because since we go move to virtual meetings, we get very little public uh, comment on these. Sure. So uh, thank you. Well, I will say, yeah, I mean, we were I worked really personally very hard on Bell Rev, and it wasn't as a, as much of a success story as it is now after pandemic and like I said, you know, it was such a, um, you know, like a beacon of like hope in the pandemic and I think it brought the community together. So there's just like a lot of, you know, support in that and, and it would be really sad to see, you know, a building go up. I understand other things would come about and, and, you know, I just wanted to be here to represent that today and, and be that voice. Thank right. you. We are very important that you are here. Thank you. Sherry Algamal has absolutely nothing to do with this project, privately or publicly. Is that correct? Because he's not made a good name for himself with landmarks in this community. Is he involved in this? I'm sorry, was it a question to me? Yes. What is it? What's the question? Sherry Algamal is absolutely uh, no, 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 not, no, 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 not no, privately no. or publicly, correct? No, 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 no implication whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, so Roger's going to plan a meet and greet with me and Lucy for how we can get together in person. Yeah, I, I can tell you I'm falling asleep because we're all virtually. We right. right. I cannot believe we're still. Well, I want to come too. Yes. Well, no, we're, we're going to organize it and you everybody's welcome, including Leah. Um, so uh -huh. I, I think I've, I've certainly said enough. Uh, if, if any, if it's okay, I think we could. Uh, close the meeting and I'll let everybody know when we hear from uh, that first applicant with his stuff and we'll distribute and then we'll write a resolution and I'll see some of you virtually at the executive and otherwise in person at our full board meeting. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Enjoy Thanks your all. vacation. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your break.